entertain the presence of a quorum? Thank you, Madam President. Councillor Baker. Yeah. Councillor Campbell. Councillor Siomo. Councillor Sabi George. Councillor Flaherty. Councillor Jackson. Councillor Lamatina. Councillor Linehan. Councillor McCarthy. Councillor O'Malley. Councillor Presley. Councillor Wu. Present. And Councillor Zakum. Madam President, everyone present. Thank you. Happy summer. Um, I'd like to ask all guests and counselors to please rise. Councillor Linehan will introduce our clergy for today. And after the invocation is delivered, please remain standing. Councillor Linehan will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Councillor Linehan. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, we have a special guest with us today, uh, Reverend Dr. Denton Lotz. Uh, he's a doctor of theology, and he's the pastor of the uh, Tremont Temple Baptist Church, which is just right around the corner here. Uh, he has an illustrious career and, um, in the Christian faith, uh, working around the world before serving as pastor. He was uh, the American Baptist missionary to Eastern Europe during the Soviet uh, period. He also served as general secretary of the Baptist World Alliance. Uh, a global alliance of Baptist uh, conventions representing over 110 million members. Uh, Pat passed a lot's theological degrees uh, from Harvard Divinity School and the University of Hamburg in Germany. Um, so it's with great pleasure that I, I, I introduce our, our neighbor, uh, uh, Dr. Lotz, for today's invocation. Doctor? <clears throat> Thank you. Councillor Linehan said I should say something about myself. Well, Fremont Temple Baptist Church, January 1st, 1863, Frederick Douglass, the great leader of the abolitionist movement, stood at the front of the sanctuary. They were waiting for President Lincoln in Washington, D.C. to sign the Emancipation Proclamation. The church was packed with blacks and whites from 12 Baptist and Fremont Temple. And they said at 8 o'clock, they were waiting for the telegram, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, everybody was nervous. Then finally they said, it's on the wire. And they had telegraph runners from the telegraph office, and they ran right down the middle of the sanctuary and gave the Emancipation Proclamation to Frederick Douglass, who read it to great cheers, and they cheered all night, and then they went to 12th Baptist and cheered till 5 in the morning. And yet we ask ourselves, being the first integrated church in America, how after 153 years, do we still have so many racial problems in America? And that is the concern, not only of men and women of faith, but all of us. Uh, I, I remember when I was president of Harvard Divinity School student body, we marched with Martin Luther King around the federal building. And uh, people thought it was only a Southern problem, but many whites would spit us and swear, and it was a very enlightening moment for me coming from such a conservative background. But when trouble comes, they always, do you notice they always ask for the clergyman? You don't need us otherwise, but race relations, let's have a prayer for peace, or let's have a prayer for race relations. But you know, it's an everyday affair. Racism isn't solved by one bill. It's solved every day. Well, I got to preach and I better stop. We're gonna pray now. <laughs> Bow our heads and pray. God of grace and God of glory, on thy people pour thy power. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. O oh God, we were taught as children to sing red and yellow, black and white. All the children of the world are precious in your sight. Yet we confess as adults that we have sinned against you and one another. We have put race above the dignity of individuals. We have put clan and tribe above the common good. We confess that often we have put party above country. We have allowed prejudice to stamp out justice. We confess that the great gulf between rich and poor, educated and uneducated, has often blinded us to your righteousness. We confess that too often we have sought justice by violence, which leads to further alienation and violence. We confess that a culture of death has engulfed this city and nation. Oh God, we, we, for, we ask your forgiveness. We thank you for your word, which teaches us that if a nation humbles itself and seeks your face, that you will bless that nation. Give us courage to be more humble, we pray. 
We thank you for sending us men and women who have inspired us to dream. The dream of that day when justice and love will kiss one another. Send us again, O Lord, such prophets and leaders, we pray. We pray that you will give our leaders courage not only to talk, but courage to act. We pray for a sense of your presence in our lives so that we might become drum majors for a righteous city. Teach us to know that without justice, no nation can long endure, and that without love, no people can find peace. Make us instruments of your peace and love, we pray. Give your people and these our representatives servant hearts so that we might do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. The, this we ask in the name of the God who gave us life so that we might live, light that we might see, and courage so that we might see in your face, in the face of every little boy and girl, man and woman. We ask all of this in the name of the God of mercy and compassion. We pray this in the name of him who walked the shores of Galilee and preached peace and lives forevermore, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance. Thank you, Pastor. That was very nice. Thank you, Councilor Linehan and Reverend Lotz. Really, really beautiful. As we open our formal business, we'll start with approval of the minutes from last meeting. If there are any objections, please state them now. Seeing and hearing none, the minutes of last meeting shall stand approved. And we will move on to communications from His Honor the Mayor, Madam Clerk. Docket number 0992, message and order authorizing the City of Boston's Transportation Department to enter into a contract for a period up to 10 years for the services of the an operator for the city's bike share program known as Hubway. The contract term would begin in 2017 with the city council's permission to enter into a contract of this type for a period of more than three years is required by section 12 of chapter 30B of the general laws. Docket 0992 will be assigned to the Committee on Parks, Recreation and Transportation. Docket number 0993, message in order to accept for the benefit of the City of Boston, a donation to the United States Coast Guard to the State Surplus Property Office of a 25 response boat tag number 25720 and boat trailer tag number DHS-61177T. The boat and trailer will be added to the Harbor Patrol's unit fleet and will benefit the citizens of Boston. Chair moves for suspension and passage of docket 0993. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. Docket 0993 has been passed. Docket number 0994. Message in order for the confirmation of the appointment of Tyreek Lee as a member of the Public Health Commission Board of Health Mr. Lee shall serve out the remainder of the term of Celia Whistlow, who stepped down from Ms. who stepped down. Mr. Lee's term shall expire on January 15, 2017. Chair recognizes the chair of the Committee on Healthy Women, Families, and Communities, Councilor Presley. Thank you, Madam President. I rise to ask for suspension of the rules and passage of Docket 0994. This order is for the confirmation of Tyrek Lee to serve uh, out the term of Celia Whistle, who has stepped down from the board. The Boston Public Health Commission Board of Health needs to add a voting member in order to continue their important work with the summer schedule of council meetings. It is really important we vote on Mr. Lee's confirmation today. Uh, Tyrek Lee is not a stranger to many of us in this room. His experience, uh, he's been fighting for public health in many roles inside and outside of SCIU. I do believe it has given him the perspective and the know-how in order to effectively contribute to the city's board of health. I ask that you vote to affirm his confirmation today. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Presley. Councillor Jackson, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Madam uh, President. I just uh, rise uh, to concur with my colleague, uh, Councillor Presley. Uh, Tyreek is uh, an amazing individual, uh, 
a great Bostonian. Um, he actually recently became a, a grandfather, but um, someone who actually worked, uh, worked his way up um, from uh, really humble beginnings uh, at uh, Boston Medical Center, um, and now actually is um, running um, one of the largest and, and most powerful um, groups uh, to advocate uh, for uh, wages as well as uh, good benefits in, in the city. So um, I, and I emphatically uh, will be voting uh, for him. Um, I just wanted to say some kind words about uh, a really great leader in the city of Boston. Thank you, Councilor Jackson. At this point, Councilor Presley moves for suspension of the rules and passage of docket 0994. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. Docket 0994 has been passed. Docket number 0995, message in order for the confirmation of the reappointment of Kathleen Douglas Stone as a member of the Boston Water and Sewer Commission for a term ending January 1st, 2018. Chair recognizes the chair of the Committee on City and Neighborhood Services and Veterans Affairs, Councilor McCarthy. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, I rise to uh, move for suspension and passage. Uh, Kathy Douglas Stone, uh, her institutional knowledge is second to none with Boston Water and Sewer. She's no stranger to this building. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. At this point, Councillor McCarthy moves for suspension of the rules and passage of Docket 0995. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. Docket 0995 has been passed. Docket number 0996, message in order for the confirmation of the renewal appointment of Constable Mohammed Mohammed, authorized to serve civil service process upon filing of his bond for the period commencing May 1st, 2016 and ending May 30th, 2019. And similarly, having been vetted by the police department already, another constable for the council to approve. Uh, so chair moves for suspension of the rules and passage of docket 0996. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. Docket 0996 has been passed. Reports of public officers and others, Madam Clerk. Yes, please. Yes, all together would be great. Thank you. Docket number 0997, notices received from the Council President, Michelle Wu, regarding a briefing from the Green Ribbon Commission. Docket number 0998, notices received from the Mayor of his absence from the city from 6.30 a.m. on Friday, July 1st, 2016, until 11 p.m. on Sunday, July 3rd, 2016. Docket number 0999, notices received from the mayor of the appointment of Onyan Young as a member of the Boston Fair Housing Commission for a term expiring July 1st, 2017. Docket number 1000, notices received from the mayor of the appointment of Kathleen King as an interim director of intergovernmental relations, effective June 29th, 2016. And docket number 01001, Communication was received from the city clerk of the filing of the assignment and assumption of 6A contract of ad temp apartments as a requested, appro requested approval of the Boston Redevelopment Authority pursuant to Chapter 121A, Section 6A of Mass General Laws. Dockets number 0997 through 1001 will be placed on file. Matters recently heard for possible action, Madam Clerk. Docket number 0474, message in order for the confirmation of the appointment of Andy McGannon as a member of the Audit Committee for a term expiring March 24th, 2021. Chair recognizes the Chair of the Committee on Ways and Means, Councilor Siomo. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I rise today to speak on Docket 0474, order for the confirmation of the appointment of Ann S. McGann as a member of the Audit Committee, and this is in a new draft, apparently there was a typo in the name. Uh, we had a hearing yesterday at 10 a.m., and we were joined by the prospective appointee, Ann S. McGann, and the city's auditor, Sally Glora. We recently have reappointed Joanne Alto for another term, and earlier this year appointed Mark Sacconi to the Audit Committee. The Audit Committee is responsible for the oversight to Boston's internal and external auditing activities, they meet at least once per quarter and report to the mayor and the city council. Ms. McGann is a project manager for the long-range transportation plan for the Boston Regional Metropolitan Planning Organization. And I believe in the committee report you have a resume, uh, quite impressive. Uh, 
She has over 30 years of experience in public and private planning with strong management skills. She has also managed air quality conformity determinations, air quality support, regional freight studies, and has coordinated quarterly and benchmarking reports. The testimony provided at this uh, council confirmation hearing suggests that she has the, both the credentials and qualifications to serve as a capable member of the Audit Committee for the City of Boston. With that, I suggest that this will pass in a new draft due to the fact that her name was misspelled in the original. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Siomo. Councillor Siomo moves for acceptance of the committee report and passage of docket 0474 in a new draft. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. Docket 0474 has been passed in a new draft. Docket number 0472, message in order approving the compensating balance agreement by and between the city and the Citizens Bank for the provisions of banking service. Docket number 0472 will remain, remain in the Committee on Ways and Means. Docket number 0622, an ordinance regarding the elimination of gas leaks in the City of Boston. Chair recognizes the Chair of the Committee on Government Operations, Councilor Flaherty. Thank you, Madam President. We held a joint hearing uh, yesterday with uh, Councilor O'Malley's Environmental and Sustainability Committee. Uh, it was a little over three-hour hearing, uh, well attended, several different panels. Uh, we're going to decide to keep it uh, in committee and move towards a working session, but through the chair would uh, allow uh, like an opportunity for the lead sponsor to just sum and substance of what occurred yesterday. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councillor Flaherty. Councillor Malley, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, it was a tremendous hearing yesterday, one of uh, the most impactful and powerful ones that I've been a part of in my time on this body. I wanted to thank you, Madam President. Uh, as well as Councillor Asabi George, of course, my co-chair, Councillor Flaherty, Councillor Jackson, uh, Councillor McCarthy, and Councillor Zakum for their participation, and every office was well represented. Um, we heard from countless uh, activists in support of this. We heard from uh, public health, public safety, environmental specialists. We heard from we see utility company. We invited both National Grid and Eversource uh, to participate. Eversource controls the gas uh, for the neighborhood of Hyde Park only. It's about 5% of the city's gas uh, usage. National Grid can, uh, oversees, delivers the gas to, to the rest of the city. Um, this is an issue that we're seeing some tremendous momentum happening uh, at all levels, but I should note the state has been doing some great work, particularly State Representative Lori Ehrlich out of Marblehead, who's been leading uh, the charge at the state level. There is a uh, similar legislation that may be implemented, we hope is implemented at the statewide level. It's currently in conference committee, uh, but we will nonetheless continue to go forward with this. It's a very simple premise of what we are trying to do, and that's fix the gas leak. There are anywhere from 1,300, which was a new low conservative estimate that uh, National Grid suggested yesterday, and I would take that with, with a, a pound of salt, um, to other independent audits have said the number could be double or perhaps even triple that number. These gas leaks can go unaddressed. There are three levels of gas leaks, one, two, and three. Uh, ones should be uh, addressed immediately. Twos should be addressed within a 12-month period. But for level three leaks, which are the vast preponderance of these leaks, there is no time frame. There was a leak in Councillor Zakum's district that celebrated its 30th birthday last year in the Fenway. 30 years. The median age for these level three leaks is 16 years. Now, under some good state legislation that passed in 2014, Every level three uh, leak has to be reassessed every year. And my point to the utility company, which they couldn't answer to my satisfaction, was why expend the energy and the cost to check these leaks every year when they're not being addressed? When to fix it, we could do it. A uh, constituent from West Rocks brought up a great point, saying that, you know, if you may need a new carburetor for your car, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, uh, you're still going to get an oil change if that is needed, meaning we need to invest right now. Uh, it has been debunked, this notion that we have a shortage of available gas to customers. And if we were able to fix these leaks, we could save consumers, ratepayers, of, of whom we all are, $90 million per year. Uh, you can take the existing infrastructure that is there, fix the leaks, provide gas to people, uh, and not have to deal with these foolish ideas like a high-pressure gas line that's slated to run across the street from the West Rock Street Crush Zone active quarry zone. Uh, this is something that is not only good for the environment, there are a huge number of trees that we all know in our neighborhood that are killed by these gas leaks. It can exacerbate public health problems such as respiratory issues like asthma. And as I said, it's a consumer uh, confidence issue. We can do something here. I'm hopeful that we'll lead the way. 
thank uh, tremendously Councillor uh, Flaherty for his leadership on this. We will have a working session, and I look forward to having something um, for it before this body uh, by this fall, early fall. So thank you again for everyone's participation um, and continue to work with all of you uh, in addressing this very, very important issue. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor O'Malley. Docket number 0622 will remain jointly in the Committee on Government Operations and Environment and Sustainability. Motions, orders, and resolutions. Docket number 1002, Council Lamatina are offered the following hearing regarding a me medical marijuana dispensary at 220 McClellan Highway in East Austin. Councilor Lamatina, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, as you know, it's now state law that in order for a medical marijuana dispensary to be issue a license, they would need a vote or support or non-opposition from the entire city council body. Uh, I am asking that we hold this hearing uh, sometime soon um, so we can allow Happy Valley Ventures to proceed on the next step in the licensing process. Um, where they're looking at the location is at 220 McClellan Highway. It's a location that I support. It's an industrial uh, neighborhood in East Boston. Um, plenty of parking. It's not in near any schools or libraries or parks. Um, and they've been meeting with the Orient Heights Neighborhood Association, and they'll be going back to the Neighborhood Association. But we need to have this meeting because I believe they want to go sometime in September to the next process. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilor Lamatina. Docket number zero, 1002 will be assigned to the Committee on Planning and Development. Docket number 1003, Council Zakum offer the following order for hearing regarding the status of the LGBTQ youth of color in the city of Boston. Councilor Zakum, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Um, this hearing order has come out of a uh, collaborative work uh, between my office and the uh, Fenway Health and the Fenway Institute, obviously located in the Fenway neighborhood of my district. Um, it's been an ongoing, I think, concern uh, for Fenway that there has been a complete lack of data on the need of local uh, LGBTQ youth, particularly youth of color in the city of Boston. This study was very focused on people who are from the city of Boston have grown up through our public school system. And there's a lot of data there that I know that Fenway Health and the Fenway Institute has been uh, working their way and I think meeting with many of you, my colleagues, uh, about this issue. And the goal of this hearing is to really bring, one, to raise awareness of, of some of the gaps in services, to look at ways that this body, city government, BPS, and the nonprofit sector, particularly the Fenway Institute and others in that area, um, can provide services. Uh, some of the statistics that are in the hearing order are incredibly troubling. Um, of the youth studied, uh, of, uh, one in five attempted suicide within the past year. Um, a huge percentage have found themselves in a position where they were having to offer sex for food, for housing, for other necessary items. Um, so it's clear there's a crisis. And I want to thank Fenway, uh, Fenway Health and the Fenway Institute for doing this study and for bringing this information before us. And I look forward to having hearing and working with you, my colleagues, and other folks, both at the Public Health Commission, city government, um, and certainly in BPS, where there are efforts being made. This is not in any way saying that we are not trying on this, but there are new things that we can do. We can use this data to serve some of our most vulnerable students and uh, youth in this city much better. So look forward to the hearing and working with all of us to find solutions for something that, now that we have the data, We've measured it. Let's figure out how we can solve this and make things better for some of the most vulnerable uh, populations uh, in our city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Zakum. Councillor Presley, you have the floor. Well, thank you, uh, Madam President. I rise to come in the maker. Thank him for his leadership. I ask to have my name added um, and just want to acknowledge uh, the good work already by many of our colleagues um, in this space. There's great uh, intersectionality here in issues uh, from Councillor Jackson and Councillor Wu's work on uh, homeless youth, um, Anissa Sabi, uh, Councillor George as well, uh, mental health, bullying, uh, the work we've done as a body on human trafficking. There's such an intersectionality here. Um, the last hearing um, uh, that we did with uh, Councillor Yancey on the issue of HIV and AIDS, um, it was very clear throughout that hearing that there are huge uh, service gaps uh, for this population. 
Um, we know that the uh, LGBT um, youth of color are representing the fastest growing number of new infections for HIV and AIDS. Um, so that's just, you know, one such disparity and issue where we have to do a better job at collecting the data so that we can um, make sure that we are doing our job to um, meet the need and to close those gaps. So I thank you for your leadership. I ask to have my name added. Thank you, Councillor Presley. Madam Clerk, would you please add Councillor Presley's name? Please add Councillor Campbell, Councillor Siomo. Please add Councillor La Matina, Councillor Linehan, Councillor McCarthy, Councillor O'Malley, Councillor Baker, Councillor Flaherty. Please add the chair's name. And now, Councillor Jackson, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, I rise uh, to um, thank Councillor Zakum for um, dealing with this issue and dealing it dealing with it with a, a trusted partner um, in, in this space. Um, as Councilor Presley noted uh, around infections, this is the fastest growing population, but um, this is also the fastest growing population of homeless youth um, and homelessness in the city of Boston. Um, many of these young people are turned out uh, onto the streets and sadly um, have to deal with some of the, um, uh, the least of those relative to uh, scruples in the city of Boston. Um, and are, are very vulnerable. Um, one of the things that we also don't think about is that this group of young people also is more likely uh, to be involved in, in gangs, um, and about 50% more likely to be involved uh, in gangs. So um, it's not only a public health issue, it's not only a housing issue, but it's also a public safety issue, and we need to ad address it uh, as such. Um, so I think it's a really uh, critical uh, component, um, and I really hope that we have um, we get over ourselves and government relative to the silos um, in terms of helping uh, this population to have all of those groups at the table uh, to help some of the most vulnerable individuals in, in the city of Boston. So really look forward to this hearing. But kudos to uh, Councillor Zakem. And as, as uh, Councillor Presley uh, noted, um, a lot of us um, have actually had, uh, had part of this conversation. But it's time that we have a holistic approach uh, to how we deal with our young people. Please. Um, add my name, and I look forward to an expedited hearing. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Madam Clerk, please add Councillor Jackson's name. Councillor Sabi George, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, uh, <coughs> President Wu, and thank you uh, to the maker for this. I think it's an incredible opportunity for us as a council to really do better, um, especially as it pertains to some of our most vulnerable youth. I'd love my name, please, to be added to this, and I look forward to this hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sabi George. Madam Clerk, please add Councillor Sabi George's name. Docket number 1003 will be assigned to the Committee on Healthy Women, Families, and Communities. Docket number 1004, Councillor Jackson offered the following order for hearing to discuss the Boston Public Schools 2016 strategic Councilor Jack plan. <laughs> Councillor Jackson, you have the floor. Today. Are we, are we, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, Madam President, I, I rise to um, bring this forward to actually invite uh, the superintendent in Boston Public Schools, um, now that he's been here uh, a year, um, to have a discussion about, excuse me, the 2016 strategic plan. Um, it, interestingly, we will increase enrollment. I, and I want to say that one more time. We will increase enrollment in the Boston Public Schools uh, to over 57,000 students, 57,314 is the actual uh, estimate. Um, and we need to look at um, all aspects of uh, how we move forward around uh, the four areas uh, noted, uh, instruction, human resources, uh, uh, family and community engagement, support and communications uh, to and at our schools. And one of the things that uh, you, Madam President, have brought up um, is financial equity and sustainability and multi-year budgeting, right? So we have to have these conversations. And again, nothing about this year was a surprise. And so we need to be able to anticipate over the next one, three, five, seven, ten 10 years, as business does, um, what our expenses are going to be um, and uh, to actually be thoughtful about, uh, sp uh, about funding, uh, funding them. So um, in addition, I would also love to hear um, more about the implementation um, that is planned uh, for several aspects. In transportation, there's a claim that there's going to be a $10 million uh, savings. I want to know how that actually happens and how that plays in uh, to this plan. So I'm uh, really looking forward uh, to having uh, Superintendent Chang, uh, as well as his uh, 
his uh, group of uh, advisors uh, come before us and let us know um, what the strategy is for the 2016 uh, uh, plan. So I uh, look forward to expediting the hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Councillor Presley, you have the floor. Oh, no. Very good. Thank you. Oh, was that the I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's a sign on. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please add Councillor Presley? Please add Councillor O'Malley, Councillor Zakum, Councillor McCarthy, Councillor Lamatina, Councillor Sabi George, Councillor Flaherty, Councillor Baker. Please add the chair's name. Docket number 1004 will be assigned to the Committee on Education. Docket number 1005, Council Sioma Wash, following order for hearing regarding medical marijuana dispensary at 144 Harvard Avenue, Boston. Councilor Siomo, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, once again, as Council Lamatina said, a uh, requirement for any companies to move forward will re require either a letter of non-opposition from the City Council or the Mayor. Uh, this will be the second medical marijuana facility, um, and I will be having a, uh, the company looking at a site, another site in Alston. Um, and I look forward to an expedited hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Siomo. Docket number 1005 will be assigned to the Committee on Planning and Development. Docket number 1006, Councillor Wu will offer the following order for hearing regarding implementing a one-card municipal identification program in the City of Boston. Councillor Wu, you have the floor. Just to explore the idea of a municipal ID program that many cities across the country have now implemented. The idea is that it, the lack of formal identification is a large barrier for many people to access city services, banking, other facets of, of going about daily life. And the burden of the difficulty of getting a formal photo identification card is disproportionately burdensome for certain communities. We think about residents who are undocumented immigrants, residents who are experiencing homelessness, transgender community. Uh, this is the opportunity for the city of Boston to create a municipal IT program that not only fills in some of these gaps, but also helps streamline city services across the board. So thanks to the leadership of the mayor and also the advocacy of this council, there is a line item in the fiscal year 17 budget that begin, takes a step towards establishing or, or studying this program. What we can do in Boston is have one card that City, the city can issue at locations throughout the neighborhoods, whether it's libraries or community centers, community health centers, to be truly accessible so that people can have a picture ID, use their familiar name, perhaps list medical conditions on there that they choose so that in case of emergency, first responders would have more information. They, we can wrap in a library card, an MBTA card function, school ID. So slimming down your wallet in addition to trying to address some of these very important gaps in services that are, again, disproportionately burdening certain residents of Boston. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council. Will Chair recognizes Council Zakum. Mr. Chair, um, I want to uh, applaud Council President uh, Wu for bringing this matter forward. It's uh, incredibly important uh, for all the reasons she enumerated, and I think in particular as we're talking about making Boston a city that is welcoming to all, as uh, Governor Baker recently signed the uh, Transgender Public Accommodations Bill as we've worked here on the issue of our in our immigrant communities and making sure undocumented people feel safe and secure in the city of Boston. Through the Trust Act, through working with the police department, um, it's incredibly important that people have this option. I mean, you can't even walk into many buildings right now without a government-issued photo ID, and that manifests itself as a hardship in numerous ways, but it comes from going to a job interview it talks, it talks about people going to meet other people, service providers, other things. It's incredibly important that we make sure reliable photo IDs are available to every population in the city of Boston. So I would ask that my name be added. I want to uh, you know, look forward to a, a swift hearing and hopefully implementing this soon. And as far as adding all of these uh, different cards in here, I think it'll also go a long way to reducing back pain for those who are, sit on their wallets all day and uh, taking a few cards out of there will be very important. So not just a uh, public safety issue, an issue of equality, it's an issue of public health as well. So thank you again, uh, Councillor Wu. I look forward to us uh, supporting thank this. Thank you, Councillor Zakum. Chair recognizes Councillor Presley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice President. Um, I rise to commend uh, Council President Wu and thank you for her leadership and wish to have my name added 
um, the first time I ever heard about uh, this uh, card, the idea of it, and that it was happening in other cities, was actually um, in an endorsement meeting with Local 26. Um, and, you know, I'm glad that this is uh, coming before us in a, in a formalized way. Um, when we talk about and bandy about terms loosely like streamline and efficiency, you know, uh, we can often lose sight of the fact that ultimately this is just about everyone that is a resident of the city uh, living the best life possible uh, and government being in good relationship uh, with folks. And so uh, whatever streamlining we need to do to ensure that that happens and eliminate those barriers so that people are not having uh, an exclusionary or unpleasant or um, cumbersome experience with government, we need to do. Uh, and this seems to just make common sense. So I look forward to an expedited hearing and to further exploring this proposal. Thank you, Councilor Presley. Mm -hmm. And are you signing on? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Please add Councilor Presley, and can mm -hmm. you also add Councilor Siomo, Councilor Campbell, Councilor George, Councilor LaMontina, Councilor Linehan, and Councilor McCarthy. Please add the chair also. And Councilor Flaherty. Thank you. Great, thank you. Docket 1006 will be assigned to the Committee on Healthy Women, Families, and Communities. Personnel orders, Madam Clerk. Docket number 1007, Councilor Wu for Councilor Zakem. Councilor Zakem moves for suspension and passage of Docket 1007. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. Docket 1007 has been passed. Docket number 1008, Councilor Wu for Councilor Jackson. Councilor Jackson moves for suspension and passage of Docket 1008. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. Docket 1008 has been passed. I am informed by the clerk that we have one late filed matter, which in the absence of objection will be added to the agenda today. Hearing none, the matters are added. And Madam Clerk, would you please read that late filed matter? Resolution of Boston City Councilor Bill Linehan. Whereas institutional money market funds were created in, in the 1970s and have developed into the standard for cash management and financing needs for the institutional investors. And whereas Senate Bill 1082 and House Bill 4216 would allow bond issuing institutions like the City of Boston to consider to continue to rely on the stability of money market funds to finance important capital and public work projects. Therefore, be it resolved that the Boston City Council in meeting assembled does support Senate Bill 1082 and House Bill 4216, which would allow the bond issuing institutions like the City of Boston to continue to rely on the stability of money market funds to finance important capital and public work projects. Councilor Linehan, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, I, I ask that uh, we suspend and adopt uh, this resolution here today. It's um, the Consumer Financial Choice and Capital Markets Protection Act of 2015. Securities and Exchange Commission uh, regulation passed in 2015, and it, it's scheduled to be enacted again in 2016. And what they're doing is they're, they're trying to change the uh, $1 to a, a floating NAV. And that, um, that will allow that, that there will be a fluctuation and change, not a predictability. It, it's a financial matter, but for, uh, for cities, for institutions, um, this is an important way in which that we preserve our, uh, and invest in our assets uh, with, with bonding. And it allows it to be um, uh, in a position where the, especially around capital investment and public works projects. Um, the Senate bill will preserve the stable $1 per share value versus a floating uh, number. So uh, I just ask that all my colleagues would uh, su support and that we suspend and adopt this today. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Linehan. Councillor O'Malley, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I just realized I was Googling this. I think there's, a, with a point of um, clarification, I think there's a technical error. I believe it's Senate Bill 1802. I think the numbers may have just have gotten transposed. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Council O'Malley. Okay, I believe that's um, a 
correction of a nature that we can address after the meeting uh, if, if everyone chooses to vote on this. Would anyone else like to comment on it? Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, would you please add Councillor LaMatina's name? Please add Councillor Siomo's name. At this point, Councillor Linehan moves for suspension of the rules and passage of the first late filed matter. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. Oh. Suspension of the rules and adoption of the first late filed matter as it is a resolution. Um, anyone in, uh, in opposition, please say nay. Doc, uh, the first late filed matter has been suspended and adopted. Now, moving on to the green sheets, would anyone like to pull a matter from the green sheets? Oh, sorry, before that, Councilor Jackson, you were motioning. Um, I'd ask for reconsideration of 1006, and I'd like to add my name. Any objection? Seeing and hearing none. Madam Clerk, would you please add Councilor Jackson as a sponsor as well to docket 1006? And Councilor Siomo on the green sheet. Thank you. Uh, I'm asking to pull uh, docket. 0823 from page two under assigned for further action and also for details on page eight of eight. Okay, Madam Clerk, would you please read those dockets into the record? In the Committee on Ways and Means, docket number 0823, sponsored by the Mayor, message in order approving an appropriation of $600,000 for the purpose of paying the cost of a feasibility study and schematic designs work associated with projects at the following schools. Boston Latin School, partial boiler replacement. James F. Condon Elementary School, boiler replacement. John W. McCormick Middle School, roof replacement. Paul A. Dever Elementary School, roof replacement. And the William E. Channing Elementary School, boiler replacement. This includes the payment of all costs incidental or related thereto and for which the City of Boston may be eligible for a grant from the Massachusetts School Building Authority known as the MSBA, said amount to be expended under the direction of the Public Facilities Department on behalf of Boston Public Schools. Uh, thank Chairman. you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We are... Uh, we took our first vote on June 22nd as, and as is required uh, to move this uh, forward. Uh, we need our second vote as today and we had a unanimous vote on June 22nd. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Siomo. Would anyone else like to speak on this docket? Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll for docket 0823? Docket 0823 for its second reading. Councilor Baker. Councillor Baker, yes. Councillor Campbell. Councillor Campbell, yes. Councillor Siomo. Councillor Siomo, yes. Councillor Asabi George. Councillor Asabi George, yes. Councillor Flaherty. Councillor Flaherty, yes. Councillor Jackson. Councillor Jackson, yes. Councillor Lamatina. Councillor Lamatina, yes. Councillor Linehan. Councillor Linehan, yes. Councillor McCarthy. Councillor McCarthy, yes. Councillor O'Malley. Councillor O'Malley, yes. Councillor Presley. Councilor Presley, yes. Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor Wu, yes. And Councilor Zakem. Councilor Zakem, yes. Madam President, doc docket number 0823 has received a unanimous vote for its second reading. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Docket 0823 has received a, sec a unanimous second reading and has been passed. Councilor Presley? Oh, I just wanted to make a note. Oh, sure. Um, then let us wrap up formal business with approval of the consent agenda. There are no additional late filed matters. So chair moves adoption of the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The consent agenda is adopted. Councilor Presley, for what purpose do you rise? Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I'm rising to create a little peer pressure for everyone here. Um, if your spouse's birthday falls on the same day as the council meeting, um, you will now follow suit and pressure to the same thing I'm going to, I'm sure. Uh, and I just wanted to say happy birthday, sweetheart. It's my husband's birthday today. So uh, 39 years young. Hopefully he's not mad I said that. But I wanted to <laughs> just uh, just say happy birthday. Two weeks ago, um, you know, I wished uh, my, my eight-year-old stepdaughter a happy birthday. So I just want to have some equality there. So, <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> happy birthday to Conan. I'm happy with the entire council. Thank you, Councilor Presley. Councilor O'Malley. I ask for unanimous consent to make a brief statement. 
Seeing no objection, please proceed. Uh, but thank you, Madam President. Uh, several weeks ago, my office was contacted by the city comptroller in New York City uh, looking for information on our sun free sunscreen um, in the parks program. Uh, I put them in touch with some great folks from the uh, Melanoma Foundation uh, who are extending their uh, generosity much as they have done in the city of Boston. We've expanded the program this year. If there's a park or playground in your district where you'd like to see one, let us know. This is a public health service that we are offering at zero cost to the taxpayer. These are all donated fully by the Melanoma Foundation of New England. New York City uh, is piloting it this summer at their city pools. So I wanted to rise to congratulate the great city of New York for once again following Boston's lead. Whoa. With an idea that originated with us. And congratulations. Thank you, Councillor O'Malley. Okay, at this point, um, if all the councillors and all guests could please rise as we prepare to adjourn today's meeting in memory of the following individuals. For Councillor Campbell, Dr. Rosina Davids. For Councillor Flaherty, Richard Swanson, Councillor Flaherty's cousin, Francis McDonough, Jay Fabino. For Councillor Lamatina, Marie M. Partee. For Councillor Linehan, Richard E. Swanson, Jr. For Councillor McCarthy, Jesse Lubier. For Councillor O'Malley, Robert Lawson. And on behalf of the whole council, Philando Castile, Alton Sterling, and Dallas officers Brent Thompson, Patrick Zamaripa, Michael Kroll, Lauren Ahrens, and Michael Smith. A moment of silence, please. Thank you. Chair moves that when the council adjourns, we do so in memory of the aforementioned individuals and we'll meet again Wednesday, August 3rd at 12 noon. All in favor of adjournment say aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it, council is adjourned.